Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has arrived in the United States. He is set to meet his U.S. counterpart, Joe Biden. This meeting is widely anticipated to further strengthen U.S.-Philippines ties. The meeting comes after both nations last week completed their largest war drills ever. The one we just told you about, the four-day visit now to Washington, is a first by a Philippines president in over 10 years. Marcos Jr. says that his meeting with the U.S. president is significant for advancement of Philippines' national interests. Before leaving for Washington, he said that he is determined to seek a strong relationship with the United States. Biden and Marcos Jr. are expected to reach an agreement on greater business engagement, as well as quote-unquote military enhancement. The visit is part of a larger move to boost economic ties between the two countries. The U.S. administration has said that a presidential business delegation from Washington will also make a visit to Manila. But the largest focus is likely to be the issue of security amid tensions with China. Manila and Washington have recently agreed to expand their cooperation in strategic areas of the Philippines. The Philippines has also allowed the U.S. to increase the presence of its troops in its territory. U.S. officials believe that strategic importance of Philippines cannot be undermined, and experts say that Washington sees the Philippines as a potential location for rockets and missiles in case of an invasion of Taiwan by China. Manila has sought to balance ties with both Washington and Beijing, but its dispute with China on territorial waters of South China Sea has made it unable to do so. On Friday, the Philippines had accused China's Coast Guard of dangerous maneuvers and aggressive tactics in the region. Those are quotes. This happened after a confrontation between a Philippine vessel and two Chinese ships in the South China Sea. U.S. too had slammed China for the incident, calling it unsafe and provocative. Philippines and China have a long history of disputes in the region, as China claims almost the entire South China Sea as part of its territory. Okay, well, for more on this, we are joined by Dave Grunbaum. He is a journalist. He's joining us from the Philippines. Dave, welcome to We On. So great to have you. What does the Philippine president's uh, visit hope to achieve uh, coming out yeah, well, of everything that's been happening uh, in the region? Yeah, well, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., he wants, first off, he wants to get a clear, ironclad, eye to eye firm commitment from joe biden that the u.s is going to have the philippines back when it comes to this controversy in the south china sea which as you said china claims almost all of it it's china's got overlapping claims in the south china sea with several different countries including a portion that overlaps with claims from the philippines we should stress though that china's claims where they claim almost the entire south china sea well, an international tribunal has ruled those claims as baseless, but we are where we are. And then, of course, we have that standoff just last week, as you mentioned, uh, between the Chinese Coast Guard and a Philippine Coast Guard, where the Chinese boat cut off the Philippine patrol boat. And the Philippines says, look, this has been going on just like similar situations has been going on for years. So they and, and, the, and the Philippines, they do not have a Navy or a Coast Guard that can come anywhere near the force of the Chinese Navy. So they need the U.S.'s help. The U.S. and, and the Philippines have talked in the past about possibly doing re, resuming joint patrols. So, you know, we're not running that firm commitment towards joint patrols. If that's going to come out of today, maybe, maybe not. But clarity. Uh, Marcos Jr. wants clarity and a firm commitment from Biden that he's going to have the Philippines back. That's one. Two, the Philippines, they also want to modernize their military. They've got a weak military. They want more modern weapons, modern fighter jets, missiles, and so forth. And they want them at an affordable cost. So those are some of the things here that Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is really hoping to get out of this meeting with Biden today. And Dave, for the United States, so much depends on Taiwan. How does the Taiwan issue factor in this trip? Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing. Under Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s predecessor, Rodrigo Duterte, who left office less than a year ago, you, the Philippines, they basically, you know, pushed away the West and embraced China. And, and, and Rodrigo Duterte, he didn't make a big fight about these issues in the South China Sea. He basically stood down on the South China Sea dispute and tried to strengthen ties with China 
hoping that he would get more investment. There were a lot of pledges from Chinese invest, you know, from Chinese invest for Chinese investment. But a lot of people in the Philippines felt that China made those pledges, but did not actually follow through. Now we're seeing a shift and we're seeing the Philippines under Marcos Jr. strengthen security ties with the U.S., which obviously has China very concerned. The Philippines just a few weeks ago agreed to give the U.S. access to four more military sites, bringing the total to nine military sites in the Philippines that the U.S. will have access to. Several of those point towards Taiwan. But here's the thing here. Filipinos are very concerned that if there were a war to break out over Taiwan, they see that as somebody else's fight. And they don't want to see the U.S. launch attacks into that area coming from their bases because they're afraid that that could lead to these sites in the Philippines becoming targets for China. Again, only if if there were to be a war breaking out over Taiwan. So Marcos Jr. has said that he will not allow offensive actions to come from any sites in the Philippines. They can only be for defensive. He's basically saying that, hey, if China doesn't attack us, they don't have to worry about any sort of offensive action here. But again, Taiwan, very much a factor in these discussions because the Philippines is less than 200 kilometers from Taiwan. Very interesting. A concern that many other countries in the region have as well when it comes to Taiwan. Dave Grunbaum, thank you so much for joining us on We On and for your excellent analysis. I hope to speak to you very soon. Thank you.